Look, this isn't easy for me to do. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I think the romance is gone. And I can't live without the romance, so... I think maybe it's better if we just go our separate ways. And also... I found somebody else. Steve Hayes, tired old queen at the movies. Let's go see him. Hey, Johnny, come on in. Goodies today. Ooh. Tired old queen at the movies. Two of our very best friends and integral parts of the TOQ team are getting married. Tommy Meacham and Dale Edwards. Tommy has shot and edited every single episode of Tired Old Queen at the Movies, and Dale has done all of the publicity and directed and helped me get dressed and calmed my nerves and um, we couldn't be happy about this so in honor of their marriage I decided to break the tradition and jump into the 80s and do one of my favorite favorite films about a gay relationship Merchant Ivory's production of E.M. Forrester's Morris this was a novel that was written by E.M. Forrester at the same time, he wrote his classic novels, A Room of the View, Where Angels Fear to Tread, Howard's End, but before he did A Passage to India. And he kept it in a trunk for years. And touching him in the gymnasium and elsewhere. James Ivory and Ismail Merchant had a long-standing gay relationship for many, many, many years. And their sensitivity and their sense of romance comes through in every single frame of this movie. Damn. Damn, it's locked. The Goblin House. My grandfather's grandfather built. <laughs> Essentially, the plot is this. James Wilby plays Morris. Morris goes off to school, and he falls in love with his best friend, Clive, played by Hugh Grant. And they have sort of a committed relationship with each other while they're at school, and they read Greek literature and everything else to each other, but nobody else knows about this. But it's kind of evident, uh, as the story progresses, that Clive has every intention of leaving this relationship and getting married and having sort of a respectable life. Your health and the health of all the ladies. Morris, come. The ladies. This absolutely breaks Morris's heart. What an ending. <laughs> what an ending. <laughs> and he leaves school and he goes to work and becomes a stockbroker. This is all around the turn of the century in, uh, in and around London. He goes out and he is in the country this one weekend and he meets this groundskeeper named Scudder. Pardon me, sir. Um, will the gentleman be shooting tomorrow? I don't think so. Who is played by hmm, Rupert Graves. Rupert Graves had played the brother the previous uh, year in A Room with a View and he was he's gorgeous in this. He's so gorgeous. I do begin to see what you mean. Well... With a haircut. There's this attraction, but you're not quite sure um, if they're really reading each other's signals. And James Wilby is just so unhappy. Um, Morris is so unhappy, and he, he goes to this window one night, and he longingly looks out into the moonlight, not knowing that Scudder is watching him on the lawn. And Scudder takes a ladder, puts it up to the window, and climbs up... And they ravish each other. And it's one of the hottest, most romantic sexual... Let's face it, we all dreamed about some hunk pulling, climbing in our window and, you know... <laughs> Morris is so disturbed by what's happened, he, he really can't quite face it. He really hasn't accepted that he's a homosexual. What are you saying to be seen with me? Hmm? You're not glad, anyway. Don't say you are. Scudder is insulted by this, and he thinks that he decides he's good, he, that he's been ill-treated, and he's going to blackmail Morris. You made a fool of me, and I can make you sorry for it. It isn't really about the money. It's about the fact that his feelings are hurt. Why did you not come? I was frightened. 
Meanwhile, there are all these peripheral characters circling Morris and wondering, why isn't he married? I don't know. He's a lovely man. I don't know. I don't know why he never got married. Well, I don't. Well, never mind that. You know, they, they, but nobody ever really says that, you know, talks about the, the love that dare not speak its name. I have a private notion. He's in love. They meet in this museum to discuss the quote-unquote blackmail, and they realize they're in love with each other. I wouldn't take a penny from you. I don't want to hurt your little finger. Come on, let's give over talking. And Scudder says that he has got a ticket to go to Argentina. He's never coming back. And James Wilby just can't bear it. He just, he finds himself not wanting to go against convention, but realizing that convention is going to destroy his life. And so he goes to this boathouse where they were going to have a tryst. And there is Scudder. She got the wire then. And unbeknownst to him, Scudder has written him a, a note telling him to meet him at the boathouse. And they have this passionate um, scene together. Oh my god, these two guys kiss. It's, and it's real and it's passionate. Now we shall never be parted. It's finished. They decide to stay together, and Morris goes and confronts Clive, his ex-love, who is now in a sort of unhappy marriage with this nice but kind of boring woman. And um, it's very interesting how the outcome of it is, and I won't spoil that for you. But you must, must sit back and enjoy and absorb one of the great gay love stories of all time. James Wilby, Hugh Grant, Rupert Graves, in Merchant Ivory's classic adaptation of E.M. Forrester's lost novel, Morris. Congratulations, guys. We love you. Let's all go to the lobby. Who is played? Let's all go to the lobby. <laughs> Hugh Grant. You know, you know. Yeah, you know, Hugh. Hugh. Hugh and cry. The popcorn can't be beat.